Figma. Interesting. This is Figma. Now, when you open your Figma, you are going to see first of all you will see one F icon here. That's that's Figma icon, and it holds the main menu. If you click on it, you are going to see menu menu uh, options there. So you are going to see your file where you can create a new design file. That is, you can create a new design file even from inside a, a, an open file. You can create a new FigJam file. Somebody might be wondering what is FigJam. FigJam is used for, you know, uh, what's it called? You know, it, it is not just all about UI design. When you are doing your, your, your user flow, your user research, your uh, team meetings you can use your fig jam to take note and to draw all those things you understand i'll leave you to explore your fig jam so you can import something from a sketch file so you can place an image maybe you want to place an image you can place an image here and together you can place an image here you can decide to save a local copy of your work there's something called version history so everything you are doing is saving it in versions. Uncle Gaya, good evening, sir. Welcome, sir. Good evening, no. Thank you, sir. Thick jam. I don't catch up. <laughs> All right. So and you can also export your files. So this are this is what you can do inside your file menu. You have your edit menu and i'll i'll just leave you to explore um what is within this um options so i'll allow you to explore all that because of want of time and then you see the next menu here it looks like an icon and if you over on it you see it's called your move icon that is your cursor that is your cursor in figma so if you if you see what is moving on my screen now that is that that's the icon that's the that's the icon that's the that's the tool i'm using currently so you can you use it to move move things around your figma file are we together now it's just for you to carry something move it to another place that's what you use if you click on that drop down you see that you have move and you have your scale so scale is ju is just basically doing um work of what normal scaling now if you see your next menu you are going to see something called frame. You are going to see something called frame. This is a very, 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 very important part of your Figma software. Every design you are going to be doing, you are going to be using frames. And what is frames? If you click, if I click on that frame now, you look at my right, you see that it is going to list out by the right of the screen, right side of the screen, it's going to list out different types of frames. And then when we talk about frame, you are seeing something like iPhone 14. Of course, it has not included iPhone 15 yet. iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Pro. So now what he's saying to you is that which type of mobile app do you want to design? Are you designing for iPhone 14? Are you designing for iPhone 13? Are you designing for iPhone 8? Are you designing for tablets? You see tablets. Tablets. Look at tablets. Are you designing for desktop? MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. Are you designing for, is it a presentation? Just like my presentation I was showing you. These are presentations, right? Are you designing presentations? Are you designing for your Apple Watch? If you see Apple Watch, if I click on one of them now, you see the size of Apple Watch. See how small it is. This is your Apple Watch. If you want to design a, 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 an app for Apple Watch, this is the size you are going to use. I will follow you. So, if I go back and I click on my frame, I'll continue. You can see paper. So, is it A4? So, Figma is actually very powerful. Sometimes when I'm on my Figma, I don't leave my Figma to anywhere. I can do my designs on Figma. I can write, I can write, in fact, I can write a letter and, and type it and print it on my Figma. I can do a lot from my Figma. I with me now, and it is very flexible. In fact, your class, your class schedule, I didn't even design it with Illustrator. I used my Figma to do it, and this is it. Are you seeing that now? So, for, 
learning this you are learning you are not just learning one skill you are learning more than one skill because you are you are also going to be be more like a graphics designer because you are also going to be able to use this app to design a normal flyer and you can also use it to design your app and um, prototypes now you either you can also choose social media social media size you see social media size instagram post facebook post twitter post are you seeing all that you can use you can also design for uh what's it called figma community all right so let's now let's now do something we were coming from what you call wire framing and sketching now and i said before you design any app you need to do your what wire framing and what is wire framing wire framing let me show you something um take a look at this take a look at this this is just looking like a skeleton of something and it's a skeleton of what my fact what do you think this is a skeleton for my fact are you there like i'm there still checking it out okay it, what does it look like it's not complete but what does it look like Look like a website now. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, it was a good answer. It is looking like a sketch, a skeleton of a website. Now, for you not to, and this is your layout, this is your layout, for you to have a guideline, a guide where you begin to design the UI, you would first do your wireframes. Your wireframes is more like a symbolic representation of how your what you want to de derive, what you where you want to achieve, what you want to achieve, where you are heading to. Are we following now? So let's try something. For instance, I would have loved to go into this screen now. Okay, yeah. Let's push this aside. For instance, let's say we want to design a mobile app that our Bible mobile app. Talking about our wireframe, what is the first thing we are going to do? We will come here. I will follow you. Please just follow. See where my mouse is. You come to where you pick a frame. You click on a frame. You click on that frame icon. Can you see? Click on frame. Just follow me. We will be learning everything while we are doing it. Then what you want to do is a phone, a phone, and then, of course, now one of the best practices now is the recent um, aspect ratio of your of um, the, re the re recent um, screen ratio of your iPhones are usually preferable. So let's, for instance, pick iPhone 14 Pro. If I click on it, it gives me something like this. I will follow him. It gives you the shape of your iPhone 14 Pro. This is the shape of that screen. And then, if you look at the top here, you are going to see something like, please try to zoom in on your phone so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. You are going to see the frame title. Now, the frame title is, is currently showing iPhone 14 Pro, right? So if I double click on it, I can easily rename it and say, Bible app wireframe. Now, in former times, this wireframe they don't you don't do it on your lap on your Figma. You draw it with your you draw it with your uh with your hand. You draw it on paper. Let me show you. If I search wireframe now on my Google. You are going to see the kind of you are going to see wireframes now so that you have a clearer understanding. Look at wireframes. They look like what sketch sketch of mobile apps. 
Now, interesting. This is this particular one is what I want to what I want you to see. This particular one. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this one. Can you see this one? You see this one that looks like somebody drew it with a hand. And then what you are seeing, you are seeing login, you are seeing home, you are seeing search results, detailed view. I'll get in it now. Now, this is your wireframe. But this time around, we want to use our Figma to just draw a quick wireframe. And then on this wireframe, you are going to notice something. You are seeing some you are seeing some symbols used to represent something. All right. So let's let's look at how we can achieve that. Now, this is our untitled file. Ah, it has it is still loading. Let's just close it. Let's just close it. Now let's come back to our file here. Okay. Now for our Bible app, you know that for an app, the first thing you the first thing you are going to um see when you open an app is one screen that shows the logo. If it is Facebook, when you open Facebook, it will first show one blank screen that shows Facebook logo. If it is WhatsApp, it first shows one blank screen that shows you WhatsApp logo. If it is Instagram, it first shows you one blank screen that shows you that Instagram logo. That particular screen is called your splash screen. Splash. Splash. As in... S P L A S H Splash. Can you see that now? It's called your splash screen. Splash screen. So that splash screen is this this particular first screen. So we are going to now rename this our screen from that what I named it before. We are going to call it what splash screen. Enter. Now we are doing wireframing and when you are doing wireframing there is no you don't color anything you just use symbols on this splash screen there is going to be a logo in the center that's our bible app logo so we are going to use a circle to represent our logo this is wireframing are you seeing that now we are going to use that circle to represent our logo now we want to place that logo in the center of this screen if you look by your right, top right, by your top right, you are going to see you are going to see tools that you can use to align. Align left, align horizontal centers, align right, align top, align vertical centers, align bottom. So we are going to use our align vertical center and align horizontal center. So it is going to place that our symbol of logo in the center of our page any questions so far you are very okay for me ah okay all right let's continue so i'm want to after that um, splash screen the next screen now, if it is an app, let me delete this splash that I wrote. If it is an app that you need to log in, do sign up and log in. The next screen you are going to see is what? Login and sign up. So, you are also going to do your wireframe for that login and sign up. Now, what you do is, you don't need to use your frame to select another iPhone 14 Pro. You can just easily duplicate this particular uh, frame that you already have and how do I do that Control D if you press Control D it will create another one for you just that whatever the content of this first one is it will also duplicate it here so but we don't need this logo in this one so we are going to delete that logo out of this one this page is our login page is our login page so what do we need to do there when you talk about login you are going to see something like this in your login so you have to draw how that login page used to be. So you are going to do, you are, you are going to have username and then you can now decide to, uh,
you can now decide to duplicate this guy i follow them in here and then we now have so the space between we can reduce the space between them take this one up also take this one up so we can decide to carry the two of them together click this shift click this okay good now you are seeing something like your login let's drag this one down so let's say we just want them to have to be the way login used to be are you with me now we just want them to be the way login used to be so we want them to have curve edges so we are just going to come here and give them border radius if you see where my mouse is here corner radius if you can see my mouse i'm hovering my mouse somewhere so that you can see where what i want to do now so i'm going to give a number to this corner radius maybe i give it 10 and i press enter it's going to curve the edges of these guys so you see how they look now so you know when you are writing your when you are doing your wireframe you write your text content it is other content that may not be usually text content that you represent with object so here i'm going to write my my login i'll follow you now don't mind the way it is looking you just follow me my login so i reduce this to 36 something like this so what you are what you are having here now is your what is your login page now after your login page the next page you might have might be login and sign up let's let's say that we have used this page to represent login and sign up abby now your next page will now be your main screen your main screen now what do we do we duplicate this one again Control d now on your main screen on your main screen that's your home page so we are supposed to rename this one login login right now then this page we are going to name it home 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 now on your home here let's delete all this we don't need all this let's delete all these things we don't need it delete let's what what um do you have on your home maybe we have something like we are heading somewhere we'll just follow me maybe we have something like this there is a picture and then how do you represent picture you represent picture with this box outline box just outline and that outline is your stroke so you use stroke you click your stroke you increase your stroke maybe by say four enter and then you remove the fill that's the color from it you might know that color let's reduce our stroke by maybe two okay that's too faint okay, let's just say we give it a stroke of three now see that now then you come back here again where you have your shapes you carry a line now you carry a line and then what you are trying to describe there is that the this place you are going to put a picture so if i draw that line okay i draw that line i also make that one three the stroke of three please if you have any questions just ask me and i also draw another line from here And I give it a stroke of three. Now, what I'm just trying to do now is that I'm trying to tell anybody that will design this thing that on this home page, the first thing you need to put here is what a picture. This box with cross sign represents picture. If you look at this wireframe we saw on Google, you will see you will see box and cross sign. What they are trying to say is that insert what a picture here. 
insert an image there are you following now so let's say after that um after that picture so we are we now we are going to now have some under our um app we now have maybe let me see and this and remind you this is the thinking phase of your design this is the aspect where you think through the app you think through you calculate what and what and what do i want to put in my app then we can say okay we want to put there's going to be a kind of like a a card that will write something let's give it border radius of maybe 10 a card after it you leave that card then maybe you have users of your app and then you put their picture in maybe circles then you now have your users like this maybe your user and then let's just put in front of them maybe in front of each of the users you have maybe uh their name and their bio something like your name and your bio so let's put that here what you are just doing is that you are just structuring let me give this vertical, uh, vertical alignment. You are just structuring how that your mobile app will be. So if I duplicate this, maybe we have more than one users. And then remember we talked about your spacing. You have to maintain clean spacing. We are doing, you will soon get into designing something nice. Now you can see, you can see that it's looking like it's looking like your wireframe so anybody that is good with design if you present this sketch to the person the person will design something with it anybody that is good with design if you present this sketch to that person that person will design something with it are we together now so this is what your wireframing and your sketching is all about i hope for you now so now from this let's now try to see if we can design maybe a simple uh mobile interface from this um our sketch so let's see how we can interpret this sketch first of all our splash screen we use iphone 14 pro so let's come let me come on let me come underneath it here and insert iPhone 14 Pro. We want to design this this wireframe now. I insert iPhone 14 Pro under it. I see me now. Inside this iPhone 14 Pro, this circle we said it represents your what your logo. So maybe we don't even have a logo. We want to just use something as our logo. Maybe we just type. Maybe we just type. Like I said, let me let me show you one one of one sample I, I was doing so something like trying to build an app like this so let's say we have let's say the name is you bible so let's come back let's say our logo is you bible so let's type your text this is this t is for typing this t is for typing so i click it and i write my words you dash bible so now remember i said we can use horizontal center and vertical center to place whatever we write in the middle of that this thing so now we have you bible it is a text it is a it's a text let me just use montserrat for it or let's see what we can use that to that it would uh montserrat Montserrat, Montserrat, let's say semi bold. Okay, good. So we don't have the logo, but we want to use this as our logo now. So if we reduce the, the size to 32 and then we center it. Now, what we just did is that we just interpreted this wireframe. This wireframe that is telling you there is an object here which is the logo. 
you are just interpreting it in your own design now by putting that logo there. Now, you will notice that while we are doing our wireframe, it was just basically white and black. There was no color. But maybe your Bible app is going to be color, having a color of, I don't know. But let's just give it, if you click on that frame and you come to the right here, you are going to see what you call fill. F-I-L-L, -L, fill. If you click, you see color there. If I click on that, I will see different colors. I can decide to choose one color for our Bible. I don't know exactly which color to choose now. Maybe someone can suggest a color. Um, because I'm really scared of colors right now. Maybe we just, for, for practice, maybe let's just say we use... Oh my, that's not good. Though. Uh -huh. Maybe we are using this yellow now. Maybe we are using this yellow. Now, you have interpreted this wireframe, your first screen. You have interpreted your first screen of your wireframe. Now, your next screen is saying that what? Your login, your login screen. Your login screen. Now, this is not the Bible Apple. We are just trying to interpret what the wireframe that we have drawn. So now this one we are saying login screen. What do you do? You can duplicate this guy. Control D. When you control D, you have another one. Now your you, all your screens on your app doesn't have to be doesn't have to carry that solid color. This one can be white. We can leave this one to be what white. Take it back to white. Now. Before I go forward, let's quickly add maybe an icon to this U Bible so that it will be a logo. In Figma, there is there are a lot of plugins that you can use. Plugins to generate a lot of things. And one of the plugins that you need is what you call Iconify. Iconify helps you to get icons. So if I right click, I have um I write I have Iconify plugin in my Figma already, but let me see. Um, uh, okay, my right click is now working. Let me just come through this place. Let me just go to my file and carry plugin and I say saved plugins. Now, if you see the list of my saved plugins, I have plenty plugins that I've used. So let me pick my Iconify. Now, there's a way you can get your own plugin. What you just do is that, uh, what you just do is that you come to plugins and then you come to manage plugins. Then you'll be able to get some plugins there. So now, my save plugins, if you just go to manage plugin and you search for Iconify, you'll see Iconify. If I click on Iconify, it's going to load Iconify for me. Please just follow me. Um, just hope the network is favorable now. Like I said, Figma works with network. Now, it has opened my Iconify plugin. What I'll just search is, I'm just going to search for Bible. So it will bring an icon that represents Bible for me. Now, look at Bible, Bible icons. So I can decide to choose any of them. Maybe I decide to pick this one. I'll just double click on it. It will have come. It will have come there. Okay. Don't know where it has dropped itself now in my design. So let me just drag and drop. So I've picked it. I can close my plugin. This is the icon that we just dragged. If I drag it inside, you are going to see that there's one small icon. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to increase the size. By dragging it from the what? From the... You don't drag from top, bottom, left, and right. No, you don't drag an image from there. You, you drag an image from the four corners. I don't know how to describe. Yes, from the four points. Not top, right, bottom, left. No, you drag from these corner, corners. 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 So that is what I'm doing. So I have that Bible app now. 
I drag it here. Are you seeing? So, I have something like this now for my home screen. How does it look? Is it coming out well? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, yes. so now, if I select the both of them and I group them together, I can use my vertical center and my horizontal center to place them in the center of that page. So we have our splash screen. So we can rename this page to what? Splash screen. That is how WhatsApp and Facebook create their splash screen. What they did is that they just carry their logo and they put it there. That's your splash screen. The next screen we want to create is our what? Our, our login screen. Now, in in Figma, in UI, UI, UX design, before you design, you must have a design system. Let me show you an example of my design system. Don't be intimidated by the design system I want to show you. This is an example of my design system. Are you seeing that? Let me delete this. This is an example. Let me let me make it visible for you. Can you see? This is an example of my design system. It contains my assets, everything that I need for that design I want to design. It contains my assets. And one of the assets you need in your UI design is your atoms. And what is that atom? If you look here, you see my atom. My atom is just basically the the those i those icons that used to be at the top of your mobile phone because your ui is your interface you are trying to design exactly how that interface will be so if i copy this from my from my design system now of course you can you can type them with your your, your you can type them but you use design design systems helps you to design fast I you do understand so meanwhile you can get your icons for network wi-fi battery and you can type your uh, 941 am or pm if you want but i have my design system so let me use it so i come here i come back to my screen page and then for this screen i will paste it Control v now when i paste it i will, I will need to arrange it inside my what inside my design so it has to go to the top and then i notice that it is not uh it's not meeting this edge here so I need to just drag it to this edge. And yes, I have I have my time and Wi-Fi icon of my phone on that um, something now. Good. The next thing I want to do is that I want to bring in my login, uh, design this login now. What do I do? I come here. First of all, login is login. We type our words, login. L O G I N login, and then maybe we give we use uh, 24, and then remember we are using what Montserrat. One of the rules we talked about is the rule of what consistency. If you are using a particular font type, you should use it across your design. So I want to center this, so I give it. Uh, look at where I am now. I give it. Horizontal center, I give it vertical center. Oh, sorry, no vertical center this time because we want it to be at the top. So, see what we have login. Login now, after your login, you see that we are using our white space very well. There's a lot of space between that. We are using our white space well. Then, what do you do? You now bring in your inputs, inputs boxes. Now, your first input box that you need is what your email email so what do you do you drag your it's just a normal rectangle you bring it here make sure that uh it is well sized like i said i will share the link to the ux laws so that you can go and read it read the ux laws so that you can know how to design your web pages now what do i need to do here i want to use outlines because I'm working, going to be working based on yellow and black. Alright. So I want to use outlines. So first of all, let me give it a corner radius of maybe 20. It might be too much. Too much actually. But of course, it's not too bad. Too much but not too bad. 
so that's 20 but then let's use outline let's see let's give it a stroke okay if we give it a stroke now if you look at your properties by the right on that fill and stroke all those properties there you see something that looks like an eyeball like an eye if you turn it off if you click on it if you click on it it will turn off that property if you if you turn it on again it will turn on that property so if i click on that it will turn off the feel the feel of that um of that particular element if i turn it on back it will bring back the feel so let me just turn it off let me hide the color there now this is what we have this is the first thing we have are you seeing that now now inside of it we now want to maybe put a placeholder and what will be our placeholder our placeholder might now be email address abby so i write email address email address i come here now of course from from your scene you already know that this is too big and of course from your, your design system should already tell you the kind of font size to use understand me so if my design system should already tell me what to use so if i'm using 24 here if i'm using 24 here then let me use 12 here i come here maybe i use 12 and then that my 12 will no longer be bold it will now be maybe regular or medium and then what do i do i bring it to this place and i maintain a clean padding there what can you see you can see something coming out what is coming out now that your login page is coming out all right so remember we are coming from this skeleton that we did here and the skeleton is becoming something clean good so don't don't mind me i have a big bias when i design i i i, I don't like dirty design and i don't like i don't know if it is something about perfection shall issue shall but let me re reduce this corner radius back to 10. i don't like the way it was looking or do you prefer it 20. do we prefer it 20. oh for me i think it, this, this is okay 10 is okay everybody will have different view uh -huh. everyone will have different view okay so now we have written our email we have i said written we have we have designed that email now the next thing there is what maybe let's say maybe uh maybe username username is meant to come before email sure. but let's just do uh what you don't need to you don't need to start drawing that again you can just easily use your alt if you hold your alt and you drag it and you release your alt it's going to duplicate that for you meanwhile one of the rules when designing for variety of users is not usually advisable to use 100 percent black it is never advisable to use 100 percent black so for that reason i'm going to take all this black now from 100 percent black and i'll take them to a shade of black let me say i use this shade of black maybe up a little bit I don't want it to be very black. Let me even pick a shade from here. Okay, so that it will not really be too sharp in the in people's eyes. Okay, let's say we use that shade. Now we have email address. Let's just edit this one up and change it to what username. Abi or oh, username now. Is it your username? Username. And then we make sure that we have a clean alignment between the both of them username email address and then the next thing we need is what password password then we can oh sorry come on z let's hold our halt duplicate that and make sure that you see one thing figma does is that while i'm duplicating while i'm dragging anything i'm seeing my measurement so it is helping me to measure my space in between my elements so look at now they are 1919 so i will release it so that means there's equal space between 
the field so i release it there and then i edit this one and change it to what password 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 good now let's still go back to our you will see something a mobile app is actually coming out it's coming out now this is my center now let me go back and see what do we have after this 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 our what this will be our button to what to eventually log in so what do we do we have to take the insert put our button to log in please let me shift this up don't mind me i used to have design by us very well ah. oh god oh let's leave it like that then i don't need to start drawing another box why because i want to maintain some level of consistency i use my alt and drag again this time i am not dragging it with the text because i didn't group it i didn't select the text with the box i just want to drag only that box and now i'm not following that spacing because it is going to be a distinct but a distinct button so i give it some more space and i release it now that is going to be our submit button so we let's turn on the fill for it if we turn on the fill and then we can decide to now give it the yellow color fill so if i click on my color i can decide to use my color picker there's one pen something like look at an eyedropper here where i'm hovering on my mouse so this is your color picker so if you click on it you can pick any color from any design on your screen so if i click on it I can come here and pick this particular yellow because I want to use that yellow. Now, when I pick that yellow, I want to turn off my stroke. Are you seeing that now? I want to turn off my stroke. So, inside it, what do I want to write? Submit. I want to write submit. So, I can decide to come, maybe copy this guy so I don't have to start typing all afresh. Now, you notice something happened. When I copied it from there, it came under this one because I already wrote that. I already wrote that before I drew this box. So it has gone underneath it. So how do you do that? Ctrl Z. Ctrl Z. Now, if you right click on your own system, I don't know why my right click is not working. If you right click on your own system, you it will show you something like bring to front okay <laughs> you can see it now if you like it you are going to see something like bring to front so that's what you are going to use so if i drag that if i use my alt and i drag it maybe i drag it here i already know that it is underneath it i drag it here and then i use my right click and then i say bring to front bring to front it's going to bring it to the front of the screen i will follow it now it's going to bring it to the front of the screen now you have successfully created your what your second screen i will follow it you have successfully created your what your second screen based on your wireframe now the next screen that you have is what where you have an image and whatever so let's rename this to be what our login screen which we just did okay good and fine now the next screen we want to create now is our what our home screen so let's also duplicate this guy ctrl d but we don't need the content inside so we delete it but we need that time and icon at the top are you following so now the first thing we need to in, uh, put here in our home page is we need to put our what our image based on this wireframe you need to put your what image so we need to get an a picture or something so let's say let's search for we can we can decide to go to onsplash.com to get a picture and then if we open on splash.com maybe we want to search for a picture of green uh, green rocky nature let's see 
What does it give us? It's going to give us beautiful, but you see the problem with, with this world then. Good things are a premium, good things are expensive. See all these fine five pictures now, you have to pay to get them. But let's just pick one from what it's going to show us. Okay, maybe we should use this one. Um, which one is even fine now? Or maybe we should use this one. Let me see. Okay, let me just let me just take this one. So you can download it on your own system and then you 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 drag it inside your Figma. But me, let me just copy it. Let me copy it and then come here and paste it. Now that's my image I just carried from on Splash. Is anybody confused about what I did? You understand it? Yes, clear. Okay. Now, I copy that image and then I come here. What do I want to do now? I need to resize this image. So when I'm resizing from my corners, I hold my shift down so that it doesn't... There's a way Figma does. If I don't hold my shift down and I'm resizing, it will be eating some part of the image inside. Can you see? It will be eating some of the part of the image if I don't hold my shift down. So let me do Ctrl Z so that it gives me my original image. Then I come to my corners, I hold shift, and then I drag. I drag to the shape I want, to the shape, and then to the size aspect ratio I want. Then I can drag my image to inside my what? Inside my mobile app. First, we have accomplished this. Now, it is your duty to style it the way you want to style it. So you can come here now in Figma. You can manipulate any image anyhow. Look at the image now. If you come here, you will see by your right here where my mouse is. You will see fill image. If you click on it, you can do anything to this image. Let's click. You can increase the exposure. So if you are a if you are a an, a, a picture uh, or photo editor or something, you can do wonders with images. I can decide to increase this now. For instance, if you get an image and you don't want to maybe attributes you can just try to manipulate the image so let me increase the saturation of the image see that the image is changing it might not be very visible to you on your phone i can decide to increase the temperature and make it warm it looks warm but i can decide to also reduce it and make it cool so it looks cool now but let me just leave it at a little bit warm and then maybe i want to tint it to give it another color, I tint it this way to give it this color, but I don't really like tinting, so I leave it a normal color. Highlights and shadows, all that you can use. Good, that's what you can do with your image. Then you can also increase the border radius of your corner radius of your image. Let's say we give it, of course, we we can decide to give it 20. Enter. So you see that. You have something like this you have something like this which looks good which looks good which looks good that's an image you have achieved this first one abi this first one now the next thing that you want to do is that there is one card here and what is that card there about we don't know so let's write the card let's just write the card Let's just design the card. And I'm sure that card might be a card for maybe a notification. Just make sure that you have proper alignment between all your um, your designs. And then we can decide to also give it 20 corner radius so that it can look like the other items there. And we can decide that its own color should be maybe that yellow, which I don't think is going to work at that moment. So let's that color to a shade of gray or black something like this because 
in design there's something called your color rule 60 30 10 color rule your 60 30 10 color rule your most your ascent color is your 10 percent and in and that ascent color is the sharpest color of your design that is what you call your ascent color so what it does is that it drags people's attention to something so like in our own design now this yellow is what we are using to define like in this our login button now anybody that opens that um, app and gets to that we are already directing his face to that login that is a call to action so you use your ascent colors to get call to action for me most of the time my 60 percent is usually white and then your your 30 percent you decide the color you want to use for your 30 percent okay so that is it and then let's say we have this and maybe it's even a notification so we can decide to get of course in my design system i have an icon for notification which i will look for and carry it from there meanwhile you can use your iconify to get notification icon i hope i have truly have notification yes i have so i can decide to yes copy that now there's something we didn't do i just remembered thank god i remembered now i copied i just did ctrl c to copy that now i come here and maybe i paste it so this is the icon i just copied from there now i will not this icon now i can now give it my ascent color which is what yellow and i can increase the stroke to two so what i want to do is that i want to put it on here like it is a notification so let me increase the size a bit please follow me oh. so uh -huh. then i come here this may not make sense but let me just say it's a notification and then what is the notification about maybe we want to tell the user that you uh you haven't so this is going to be of course the people that will code the mobile app in the back end will know how to generate this data so you might say you haven't read up to one hour today maybe the user have set his bible to a benchmark of one hour per day so it will be measuring it for him let's reduce that to medium and let's reduce this from maybe let's give it let me see if 12 is too small 12 cannot be too small so let's put it back to one line and then we want to give this text color white color because it is going on top of a black um card so i'll change the field to white now we have something like this for this place i believe it is beginning to make some sense so now look at what we are having look at what we are having it's beginning to make some sense now imagine that <clears throat> what can we do from here now imagine that yes there was something i said i forgot there was something i said i forgot now when you design your password input uh, button there's usually the encryption here so we have to put that i icon so i have it in my icon collection so i copy that come here and then i paste it so i just want to put it here remember if you are logging in on any website you can decide to show your password or not show it can you see that now so after that following our wireframe again now what do you notice you notice that from the moment we did our wireframe it was very easy for us to design because we have something a guideline that we are following designers that do their wireframe first design faster and better than designers who don't do wireframe meanwhile a lot of designers are very lazy and they don't do wireframe they just go straight and start designing because they feel they already know what they want to do 
But when you have a wireframe, it is very easy for you to follow the guideline of that wireframe to achieve your goal. So what is the next thing on our wireframe now? User, user and, uh, okay. I don't know why we said user, sha, but we're just trying to learn anyways. So let's put that user stuff there. So what we need, what we need to do here is that we put user user avatars in circles, in circles. So we have a circle like this, and then <clears throat> let me copy this text and use it. I'm going to color it black. So maybe I come. This particular user now, of course. <clears throat> Let me search for a user. Let me see. Uh, Nigerian man portrait. I'm searching inside of Unsplash now. Mafat, are you there? Mafat, are yes, you? Okay, I just want to be sure that you are following. Yes, I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm following, sir. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm searching now for. Um, I'm searching now for. An image that I can use. Oh my! This man's image. This man is looking old. But however, nevertheless, notwithstanding. Let's use the man. Oh, we should not use him. Let's go ahead and use him. I think we can. We can, sir. Uh -huh. So, let's... Me, I said I will just copy. Copy the image. You can save, you can download it on your laptop. I'll just copy the image. I want to paste it here. Now, what I want to do is that I want to put this image is having a watermark, but just because we are learning, let's just use it. I will reduce the size of this image. Remember, I said if you don't want Figma to be taking the image anyhow, you have to hold your shift when you are reducing size. Now, I'm zooming in. Now, what I want to do is that I want to put this man's face inside this box. So, let me try that and see. I, I click on this image, I hold my shift and I click on this box and then I right click and then I say use as mask. So when I say use as mask, mask what happens is that the, the image will enter, it will take the shape of that shape, it will enter inside that circle. So the image is inside that circle now, look at the image. So I can drag that image so that it can enter the circle very well, okay let me increase it a bit. Okay, so can you see now? This is our first user. Now let's just give our circle some stroke so that it can look some stroke of let me see four. Oh, that stroke is going on that image. I want my circle, yes, circle. Then I give it a what a stroke. Uh oh, what's going on? Let's give a stroke of six and see. Okay, it's speaking. It is affecting that image. Okay. Z, Z. Let me try to get my circle now. Um, if I come here, I can pick my circle. This is my circle, which is my ellipse. And then I will just say, give it a stroke. And I give it a stroke of five. And then... Color of my stroke is black. Now, if you see what is happening, why that stroke was not showing? The stroke is going inside. One of the features here where I'm hovering my, my mouse, you see inside. So let's change that inside that the stroke should come outside. So the stroke is coming outside now. I don't know why that image is, you know, 
okay let's go back 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 let's try to achieve that let's come out let's take our image outside again let's try to bring this circle on top of it bring to front let's give the circle a stroke already of maybe three right three looks too much two let's first give it a stroke already and a stroke of a shade of black or red or maybe we even decide to use that our yellow color okay which doesn't make sense at the moment though but now the circle is on top of this image now so but we still select the both of them and then we say use as mask so the, the image the image actually is supposed to be on top and that was what we do, did earlier so i was wondering why it didn't work let me select the two of them and put the image inside that circle good so what i i'll do now is i'll drag this image please just follow me i'll drag this image like this good good so let me see if i can add a stroke to my mask group and i don't know why it is outside uh inside outside inside outside inside oh. choo, 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 choo. okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw another circle over it just follow me i'm going to draw leave that I'm going to draw another circle what i just want to do is i just want to get a stroke over this over this and then i give it maybe i just give it a black color and give it a stroke of three black and then i just turn off the feel yes what i just want to achieve is that i just want to have something around this image okay so let me do something like this nice so having something like this makes sense right makes sense so then in front of it we now want to write because this man is looking old we can name it we can name him Chuku. Callistus Obina. A perfect name, right? Then we can now put this man's now. What we, another thing we can do is that we can decide to 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 either put them in cards or write it like this. So let's just put let's just first of all do it like this. Now let me cop let me let me copy this. Mwachiku is let's say businessman. And then we reduce the boldness of that businessman because it is his. Now this is a representation of what you see here. Can you see that now? So, this is one user, and you see our app is coming out already. I'll follow it now. Our app is coming out already. Then, we can now decide to duplicate this. Then, first of all, let's group all, let's group all this particular side together. Group, control G. And then we can decide to duplicate it. One. 27 to 27, 3 nice so of course you need your navigation to be under and our navigation is usually uh, a rectangle goes inside of here so your navigation can be please let this guy go up a little bit a 
In navigation, you can color it maybe black. You can color your navigation maybe black. Um, let me just quickly get the feedback. Is this thing making sense at all? Okay, the goal, the goal is just for all of us to now learn. Now, we are trying to put our navigation underneath it now. So, now, what are those navigation? Those navigations are those buttons. Like I'm trying to avoid using this yellow. But, let's see if that yellow... No, that yellow is not good. Let's use this black. Then our icons that will be on it will now be yellow. So, what we are putting now is our... Um, navigations so in our navigation maybe we want to have home um, search all those kind of things so let me go to back to my icon collection I pick do I have home in my icon collection I think I do I pick home and I want copy I come back here I paste Ctrl V, normal copy and paste in Microsoft Word, and then I want to color it, give it a color of what that yellow. Now, look at it. All I just want to do now is I just want to increase it. This is home. Can decide to give it corner radius of maybe 20 so that it will look beautiful it's looking like something fine now okay and mind you even on this guy you can give it corner radius of maybe 30 or 20 or 10 you just want you just want to have a bit of curve up here which of course you can do. Let's drag this and give it some curve. Just want to have a bit of curve. And then let this guy is it black? No, let's give him black. Okay. Now we have put one icon which is our what? Home. This one takes us to home. If it's looking too faint, you can decide to increase the stroke width to 2. Now it is 2. Let this guy go up a bit. So that this guy can come here. Then this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. You can decide to reduce their, you can decide to reduce their spacing to 20. So that our app can have some spacing. The next thing after our home, maybe we want to put after home icon, maybe we want to put uh let me see what 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 now. Um maybe your search. Search command C. If I paste, I come here. I also give it the color of the current color that my guy here is having. I pick it, I increase it to also see how I can get equal size with this guy. Remember, I gave this one stroke width of two, and then I gave it border radius of ten, and that is it. We have two icons now, two navigation icons now. Maybe the next one we want to put is maybe I don't know. We didn't put. You see, you see how we, you see how we now have to be calculating what we want to put simply because in our wireframing we did not take note of that. In our, had it been in our wireframing, we had put our navigation bar here, and. We already put the kind of icons we want to have there. It will just be us going to pick the icons and adding them. But now we have to think about the icon we want to put. 
So it makes your um, design makes it slow. So let's pick another. Maybe this time around. What do I want to pick now? Um, this one is backward scan now. I don't know what backward scan I will be doing in that app. Um, what looks like it now here? This one is looking like a church some um, icon. I'm looking for an icon. Maybe let me just put. Let me just put message inbox copy come here paste now what we want to do is that we want to okay design come here we want to give it a feel of the same feel of this guy i picked it and then increase the stroke width by two enter i will follow it now so let me let me try to see how I can manage to get equal because one of the things is that we must be consistent with our our spacing and our size. So even even these two, they are not as big as these guys. So let's even try to make them a bit bigger. Good, and this one. Good. Now, one of the things, okay, let's give it a corner radius of 10 and see. Now, one of the things you will see here is that you are just watching the way I'm flowing with and how my design thinking is. So, it will be easy for you to also think through your own design. So, let me copy this. Let me paste it here. Ctrl V. And then let me do the same thing I did for all those guys to eat. I come and I give it a feel a stroke feel of this yellow and I give it my stroke width of two consistency among all of them stroke width of two and then I come here and I just increase the size of this and I bring it to where it is supposed to be here I increase it a bit more a bit more so you this would have been avoided if you already have a design system that tells you how to set your icon then I let me give this border a of 10 so that it can look like this fine like this now look at what we have look at what we have is this not is this navigation not fine navigation is looking beautiful now let's now review what we have done take a look at the wireframe and take a look at the output this is the wireframe the wireframe looks like it is even rubbish if you don't even know about UI UX now you might think it is just somebody trying to draw rubbish but you don't know that, that this is even something a concept that is being communicated in these blocks of um, letter so now look at the app that we have now look at what we have been able to build this is how it looks now this is how it looks now now the next thing we can do is that of course, you know that in your in your in your login page. Okay. Um, yeah, it is it is okay like this. It is okay like this. Uh, it is okay like this. It's okay like this. So the next thing I want to do, let's edit this login and change it from login to home. Home, oh, enter. Are we together now? Then, any questions so far? Let me take a question.
Mafat, any question? Bami, any question? Joseph, any question? Tinidas Foundation, any question? Okay, I really hope that this is still recording. Okay, no problem. I I I will make the video available. Any other question? No, 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 no. Okay, I I think it is to an extent it is well understood so far. So it's just that you know. Sometimes it's just when you want to start doing it again on your own. You might encounter a little bit challenge, but if you have a guide to be easy for you to... So far you watch through what I was doing and you understand the concept. Because, of course, I didn't pick this from, from anywhere. I did it from the beginning till we get to this point and every one of us were, you know, watching it. Now, after you design your app, the next thing you do is that you prototype. I don't know if we're supposed to prototype today. Let me see our course outline. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, we're supposed to. We've done wireframing, right? We've done introduction to the Figma software. We've done and some practice with the, with Figma, which is the UI design tool. So creating a simple UI prototype. So we've created that UI, we want to prototype it now. What is prototyping? Prototyping is connecting different screens to each other. It seems like our time is really gone. Okay, it's just eight o'clock now. It's not just two, two hours. <laughs> Please, should I continue? We are almost done. Yes, sir. Okay. So, the next thing I want to do is that, you know, when you open your WhatsApp, your WhatsApp, it adds from one screen to another. When you open your Facebook, it leads you from one screen to another. I will follow you now. So, so also we want to do here, we want to connect this screen to each other so that we, they can be, we can view it can even view it on your phone. I would think I even view it on your phone. So now, what do we do? We have, like I said at the beginning, we have design and we have prototyping. Now, what I'll do now is that. I'm going to come up here. If you look up here, see where my, see where my mouse is. You will see design and you will see prototype. Have we seen it? Yes. So, yes. is there has anybody is there anybody that has not seen prototype? Okay, everyone has seen it. So we click on that prototype. We we'll click on that prototype. You now have the you now have ability to connect your screens. So what do we do? The device we are using is what we we'll click. We we'll choose a device. We used iPhone 14 Pro, right? So we click iPhone 14 Pro so that we want to view our app to show us there. Now I come here. I click on my splash screen. When I click on my splash screen, you see if I over or around the edges, you are going to see a node with a plus. Let me zoom in so that you can see. You will be seeing a node with a plus icon. So I will draw, I will click that plus and see what I'm doing. I will click that plus and drag it to the next screen. That means from splash screen to your login screen. Then it brings out this, this box for me. This box is where I'm going to determine the interactivity, the interactions, what will happen. So I'm saying, now it is set to on tap but i don't want on tap because you don't tap on your you don't tap on your splash screen your splash screen 
just comes by itself and it goes by itself so you do your what after delay so it's going it has to delay for some time so let's set after delay to for instance 5000 milliseconds which is your what five seconds if i'm not mistaken i don't know sure then after that navigate to it as we have connected it to login already now this instant is talking about what kind of transition do you want is it instant transition that is immediately it is after that delay just change immediately do you want it to dissolve do you want it to do smart animate and what no, all like that so what we want is that we want it to what dissolve inside so let's do dissolve and then when you say dissolve it opens another listing for you is it is out or is in and out or what so let's just choose is in and out and then is, is in and out for what 300 milliseconds interesting we have set that let's close that now when you come to your login now remember in the on this particular login screen the user will be doing something what will the user be doing the user will be clicking on the login button the user will be clicking on the what on the login button now so that means you are putting you are not putting your interaction remember on this splash screen we put our interaction on the screen but this on this one we are not putting our interaction on the screen we are putting our interaction on that login button because it's going to be that no login button that will be clicked to move to somewhere else so what am i doing i will click on this login button immediately you click on that login button you will see interaction that node coming up along the edges so you drag that from there when it is clicked it should take you to where to your home page and it opens your interaction box for you and then you are saying on tap on tap which is what you also call your what click that is when you tap on it when you tap on it what happens navigate towards navigate to your home and we are still using our dissolve 300 perfect close then of course our home is so far the last pay screen that we have designed so far and then we have not really designed um, any other screen apart from that so good and fine this is just a very simple simple design now i can now go back and click my design good and fine the reason i click my design is that there's something i want to do there's something i want to include here because yeah you will need to type something and we used to indicate your your ui you need to show everything that will be happening so let me pick one of my keyboard screens from here let me see which um this thing let me use dark mode so let me pick my dark mode from here copy and come here paste all these are assets you will get it very you will, in fact you will easily get it once you just search for it all right so let me just set it to the screen size i'm using this because you know that what i'll be typing i'll be typing my email and my password and everything so this so i have something like this i have something like this or i can rather do my interaction to be like this please follow me i can rather do my interaction to be like this when a user clicks on any of these then the uh what's it called the the keyboard should come out so let's shift this towards this side we are almost done with this class then let's duplicate this to this place we're just trying to do something here now and then let's delete this from here so let's put 
No, now the interaction that was here before, click on your prototype. Let's inter let's do interaction again. Instead of going here now, instead of going here now, of course that login should still go to home. Although when you in your real time your app, when you click on login without entering any username or password, it will not take you to your home. It will throw you an error. So let's just leave that. Now let's come here. If you click on this username or this or this it should take you to this particular screen so let's do the interaction drag it here and say on tap navigate to login dissolve this the same thing with this on tap navigate to login yes the same thing with this on tap navigate to this good and fine so let's close this now this login button should now take us here interesting now at this point what do we want to do we want to see our app in display so we have two type of presentation we have the preview presentation and we have the present presentation so your present is going to show it in another screen but your preview is going to show you your app in this current screen so let's click preview to see what we have built so you can see your app is loading you can see your app is loading see your app is loading oh low battery oh sorry this is another one let me close that i'm previewing flow 2 now see our app in display Give me one minute, please. Before this system goes off, let me quickly plug it. I've been working for two hours straight. Just give me a second. Okay, so it's charging now. Is it charging? Yes, it's charging. Okay. Are we there? Are we are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so what we were what we were trying to do is that we're trying to preview our app. What have we designed? Let me restart the app. It's just like your WhatsApp, your Facebook. That is how it will happen. This is restarting it. Your app is starting. Is, your app is you Bible. Then it opens your login. This is not different from what any other app there, Abby. So if you want to type now, if you click on our what username, if you click, what happens? It brings out the screen where you can type your username. When you type your username, after typing your username, you click on your what login. When you click on your login, what happens? You click on your login, it takes you to your what home page that is your what your prototype of your mobile app you have designed this is what you hand over to your mobile developers they are going to develop it exactly the way you designed it do we understand it now let's now look at what we have done in our presentation view let me open it in presentation view so we are we are we are getting close to the end of the class for today I will really love it because I'll be giving assignment now. Look at it. Look at it in your mobile phone. Let me restart it. This is a mobile phone. Let me restart the app. Look at your app on your mobile phone. This is your U Bible. Then you have your login. And then if I click on my username to open where I can type my username. And then if I enter, maybe I've typed my username and I enter my login. If I click on my login, my app opens. Isn't this beautiful?